go, here we go, here we go. After the All right, lads, it's I, Captain Frieza 700, and we're here to do a wog lore. So, this is gonna be both fantasy and 40k, so brace your butts. I wanna see two feet grins out of everybody. <laughs> In an orc society, a wog has many definitions and many meanings. Wog can refer to the energies that really make their technology work, because without wog energy, then they can't have a shooter that actually shoots. They can't have a ramshackle piece of scrap that actually is a vehicle. They can't have all these beautiful technologies that they use without wogs. Now, what about an event? Well, that's the wog we're talking about. This is a wog where it is an apocalyptic event that you have to really brace for, because this can easily destroy empires and this could destroy worlds. In Warhammer 40k, hundreds of worlds are lost to one wog at a time, and that's considered minor. To a major wog, you're losing a thousand worlds, maybe even more. And this is why certain wogs are to be kept under constant vigil for. Now, the last wog is really more or less interesting, but it's just the fact that they just don't pronounce the G so instead of it being a wog, it's more like wah. And of course, a wah is just them not being able to pronounce war. Because us humans are more sophisticated, so we're able to pronounce war with that hard R, whereas orcs don't have the capability to put the damn cheeks together and go war. Now, a wog has been described as a holy crusade. I am totally against that idea. Because Orcs aren't smart enough to spread their religion. If anything, they're too damn stupid for such an advanced concept as to teach humans and to teach other races that are lesser than them and less green than them about the power of Gork and Mork. Really, this is more or less just a massive military invasion, a massive migration of orcs coming to your world, coming to your continent, coming to your village, coming to take your wife, and just fucking everything into utter shambles. This is a wah, and this is something that I like to do. This is just utter insanity how these things start. So how would a wah start? Well, a wah starts usually because a war boss has gained momentum and hasn't lost. If an orc war boss keeps winning and winning and winning, and then his name actually becomes known, other orc tribes are gonna say, you know what? I'm not gonna fight him. I'm actually gonna follow that guy. That asshole knows a thing or two. And they're gonna follow him for the free loot, free spoils, and the free chances of fighting. Because for once, it's not their bodies that are being risked, it's his bodies. At least that's what the orcs think. They don't realize that the war boss is just using them as a means to advance his own goal. Usually when a wog is assembled, the person on the receiving end isn't too damn happy because a wah isn't gonna stop until they've been utterly crushed. So we know how it starts. The orcs get too damn powerful. One guy just basically pushes them to victory. A tribe of orcs becomes this much of a problem that it needs a whole empire or a whole fucking faction to annihilate it. But the problem is, is that you're probably thinking, well, they're just orcs. What could be the problem with just orcs? Even though there's a lot of them, what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. One orc tribe, they're not that big of a deal. In Warhammer 40k, one tribe could maybe have a few stompas, a few chainsaws, some that's a little technologically advanced. They may have some big shooters, but in a log, every orc is a big shooter. There will be three times the amounts of stompas. There will even be gargants, which are giant titans. And this is all because there's more mechs, more orcs, more technology at their disposal, and more resources. So this is why they're able to just topple hundreds of worlds. Now in Warhammer Fantasy, wogs aren't that threatening, 
because it's more toned down, but they're still very devastating. Very easily could they wipe out the Empire. In fact, the Empire has been taken over by a Wog before. And this was a Wog by Grom the Paunch. And another Wog that almost took out the Empire by a totally different but totally interesting circumstance. Now, Grom the Paunch was a goblin. So he's smarter than an orc. He's able to actually keep his shit together. And he was able to invade most of the Empire, pretty much rule it. No resistance because he had so many orcs at his disposal. This wasn't enough though, because then he had a vision from Gork and Mork and decided, you know what? Gork and Mork's right. I gotta go to those High Elves and teach them a real fucking lesson in fighting. Which he did. He lost, but he fucking fucked them up. That's for damn sure. Now, in Warhammer 40k, we have some interesting WOG stories. My favorite WOG is the Lost WOG by Warlord Grizzguts. Now, Grizzguts is a very uninteresting war boss to say the least. But, something that's interesting about him is that he had a WOG that pretty much killed itself. Can you imagine that being so fucking stupid you killed yourself? Well, this orc did it. Now you may think, well, how did this happen? Well, this is a second side note, but when a wog is together and there's so many orcs, magic becomes very powerful. Or in 40k standards, what that means is there's a lot of warp energies. And with so many warp energies, and you're flying through space, which is the warp that you're going through, you're generating so much warp energy that you actually could rip a hole in time. And that's what Warlord Grizzguts did. He went so fast through the warp that he actually went back in time to where his wog started. And here's the interesting part. Grizzguts really loved his shoot-up. He really loved it. He loved it so much that when he ran across his earlier self, he was too stupid to realize the consequences of killing himself. And also it was too stupid to realize that he went back in time. As far as he knew, that guy had the same gun he had, so he butchered his ass, and then had two of his favorite guns. He was so damn happy, he didn't realize that he just pulled a Back to the Future and faded out of existence, along with his whole WOG. Yeah, those WOGs can get a little hectic. Sometimes they solve themselves, other times the WOG just kind of dissipates due to boredom. I'm not joking, it will dissipate if they're bored and there's nothing going on. So you may think, how do we destroy a Wog? I'm an Imperium, I'm part of the Empire, I'm part of the Elves, I'm part of the Eldar. How do I defeat them? Well, there's a lot of ways you could stop a Wog before it even fucking begins. Now that's something that people don't take in consideration. Now, the Eldar got it down to a T. Imperium, they try, and they do succeed sometimes. But... The Elves and the Eldar have it way better than the humans do it, because they always succeed. The Empire and the humans, they don't always succeed. So how do you do it? Well, before a WOG even begins, you can tell that a one orc tribe is gaining way more territory and way stronger than the other orcs. That's your alarm right there, that that orc warboss is a problem. Usually all you have to do is just assassinate him. Now, he's usually surrounded by a bunch of knobs, which are his bosses, his uh, little protectors, and those knobs are pretty big orcs. They're actually the bullies of the other orcs. So, you're gonna have to somehow take out the knobs and the boss. But if you do this, then the whole tribe is gonna just falter and run away, because they don't know what the fuck to do without their boss until another orc boss rises to leadership. This is a very interesting way to not only stop a wog, but to also prevent it from happening to begin with. Now, another way to destroy a wog is to bore them to death. I ain't fucking joking, this won't kill them, but this, they'll be so bored that they'll actually leave the wog. They'll take their tribe and say, fuck this shit, I'm out, and they'll walk away. So how do you do that? Well, you give them a slow campaign. A campaign that's so grueling, so slow. Or you give them another campaign. A 
so fucking highly attritious campaign. In Warhammer 40k, this doesn't work so well. Because, well, in 40k, there's millions of orcs. But in Warhammer Fantasy, there's only like a few hundred thousand. That's not as many. And it's much more detrimental when you kill some versus 40k. But in 40k and Warhammer Fantasy, if you give them a long campaign, they'll get so bored sieging your planets and taking forever to reach the destination that they'll just say, fuck this shit, we're going our own way. In fact, whenever you follow the path of a log, you'll notice that it's a one big tree with tons of leaves, tons of branches coming off of it. And the reason why is because the other tribes are like, you know what? I'm going to go out this way. You know what? I'm going to go out this way. And then, also, the individual orcs are going to just say, you know what? I see some shiny shit over there. You know what? Fuck the boss. I know better than him. I'm going this way. Now, they do come back, eventually, to join up the main force if they want to get to a proper fight. But, this is very easily the case in dealing with these orc units, is to scatter them. Because when they're scattered, you could either eliminate the branches, so that way the tree trunk gets narrow, and then that way their main force is weaker, or you scatter them out so thin that you annihilate the main force, and then all those leaves just fall with the tree. That's how you do it. Another way is attrition, as I said. Attrition is you kill so many that the orcs lose all that wah energy. They see how badly they're getting beaten and bruised and they just say, fuck this shit, this isn't proper fighting, this is bullshit. I'm gonna go have fight with an orc boy where I know I can not only win, but get some spoils in as well. That's one of the other ways. In 40k this doesn't work as well because they like to actually burn worlds, whereas in fantasy they will actually cut it out if they're losing way too many. like. If the whole tribe is burnt to a cinders but one guy is win who's alive and they won, that's not really a victory in his mind. But it was a good fight in his head. So there's your utterly run down version of what an orc wog is. I hope you lads learned something about it. And just always know that a wog is apocalyptic scale event. And it is the energies that drive the orcs is the energies that really sustain the orc technologies. But know that without a wog, the orcs would be useless. So if you can cut it before it even starts, you would have an easier way of dealing with the orcs versus just straight up attacking them head on every time. That is the lore video of the wog. We're gonna probably make a part two where we go deeper and deeper into it about how the inner workings are and the certain military tactics that a wog might use or the individual wogs themselves but just know this is a very broad basic introduction more or less to the wog see you guys next time don't forget to like comment subscribe to freeze the 700 click it right down below it ain't hard to press please